What's up, everybody? This is Fred Ricciani of TSC News, your home for the unique perspective on mixed martial arts, pro wrestling, and a little bit of everything in between. On today's episode, we have a very special guest. We have some unique facts about WrestleMania you may not have known about your favorite WWE superstars, and a little bit of news and analysis on Bellator MMA's expansion right here in the Empire State. But first, part one of our conversation with one of Ring of Honor Wrestling's fast rising stars. I'm talking about a man named Will Ferrara, a New York native who currently is teaming with the popular Cheeseburger and ROH. He's been cutting his teeth for years as a singles wrestler, decided to transition to tag team wrestling. And you may not know this, but he actually just got promoted a few months back backstage. So he's making waves backstage and he's ready to make waves on camera. So check out part one of our interview with pro wrestler Will Ferrara of Ring of Honor. Hey, man. How's it going, dude? Thanks for having me. Hey, pleasure's all mine, dude. Now, you are a local area guy, right? New York based? New York based, born and raised right out of Queens, but currently in the Philadelphia Philadelphia area right now. Now, I know Philadelphia is where ROH is based, but being a New York guy, is it, is it a little hard being in Philly, being around all these Philly sports fans, you know, the Eagles, <laughs> the Phillies, all these guys? Uh, not as hard as you would think. You know, I kind of keep in a bubble. I, even growing up in New York, I was never so much of the sports other than wrestling, but, you know, it's definitely enemy territory. <laughs> <laughs> I got to be careful with New York uh, swagger I wear. How's the weather been treating you, this, this unpredictable New York weather? Pretty sure, man. I'm pretty sure they're going to get rid of season soon. It's just going to be a free-for-all. You know, expect anything every day. It's been snow. It's been nice today. We had this blizzard last week, but, you know, closer to spring, summer, my preference. For sure, for sure. Yeah, first day of spring just happened. Hopefully it'll start to feel like spring. Now, for anybody that watches ROH, I'm sure they know you from the multiple matches you've had over the years, particularly recently teaming up with Cheeseburger. I want to congratulate you first because you are a guy that is a product of the Ring of Honor dojo, the ROH dojo, and you and Cheeseburger have been named assistant trainers. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Uh, thank you very much. We've uh, been assistant trainers there since last August when they restarted the beginners program at the ROH dojo, and it's really cool, you know, because I wouldn't be where I am without all the help I've had throughout the dojo, so this gives me the chance to pay it forward to the new students and to ta teach them what others have taught me so it's a really cool experience now you were a singles competitor for a long time you still do singles matches here and there what made you want to transition to tag team wrestling with one of roh's most colorful stars well it's kind of the opportunity just kind of uh, came up you know like me and cheeseburger train all the time together and we got thrown in a tag team match and the chemistry was just there so we're like hey you know there's something here we should run with this and we've been running with it since and you know it's a lot of fun it's it helps me feel more comfortable in the ring. Not that I'm uncomfortable, but one of my best friends, Cheeseburger, there having my back, you know, it's, it's a good uh, boost. And I'm sure he feels the same way. It's been a lot of fun teaming with Cheeseburger. As two guys who have been singles competitors throughout your careers, were there any sacrifices you had to make before really gelling as a team? Um, not really. You know, like Ring of Honor is cream of the crop. So a lot of guys are coming here. There's a lot of new talent coming in. Like, you know, we just had Bully Ray, the Hardys all added in it. The landscape constantly changes. So to change gears from singles to tag team, it just, it opens up a whole new realm of opponents and tag teams, you know, kind of switches things up. So I think nothing sacrificed, if anything, it just added to it a whole new perspective for us to gain experience this way, you know, wrestle tag teams now instead of just uh, individuals. You mentioned all the changes in ROH, and over the years, there's been guys that have left, and there's guys that have been come in. You got the Hardys who just came in, Bully Ray. You have the absence now of Kyle O'Reilly. There's a lot of rumors about some of the other ROH talent. When you see some of the longtime ROH talent decide to go elsewhere, try new things, go for different endeavors, uh, do you look at that as a loss, or do you look at that more as an opportunity for guys like yourself and Cheeseburger to shine? Um, a little bit of both. You know, like all the guys that have moved on from Ring of Honor, you know, their, their impact is there, and it means a lot uh, to have them on the team and for them to move forward, you know, it's it's good for them. And as for us, you know, hopefully that means that when the top guys move on, guys like me and Cheeseburger move up the rank and new guys go in before us. So, you know, uh, it look, I think that it puts more weight on the shoulders of me and Cheeseburger because now we got to live up to the legacy that they set the standard for, the, the Ring of Honor guys in the past. And, um, you know, 
I think that I'm down for it. You know, no matter who it is, Ring of Honor is a, a top talent. So if it's the guys of the past and new guys to Ring of Honor, the talent tier is hold to a high standard. So we're going to have to hold up our end of the bargain regardless of who we're in there with because it's Ring of Honor. You're a longtime fan of Ring of Honor and professional wrestling. What was it like seeing one of the OGs of Ring of Honor, Christopher Daniels, finally capture the ROH world title? Uh, it was awesome. It was there. I've seen it live it happen in Vegas, and it was great. You know, I know that it meant the world to Christopher Daniels, and he deserved to be a, lo- a world champion years and years ago, so it's great to see him accomplish his dream now. Like, he's a class act all around, true professional, and I think he's a perfect example of what a Ring of Honor world champion should be. Have you had an apple teeny with him lately? No, not lately. Uh, I, would, I would take him up on the offer if he throws it out there, but not lately. As he says, you know, one apple teeny a day keeps the doctor away. I believe him. Now, you started with Johnny Rods, WB Hall of Famer, I believe at Gleason's Gym? Correct. Uh, right while I was in high school, I started real young, and I'm glad that Johnny gave me the opportunity to start training at such a young age. I've heard a mixed bag about him. I've heard some people that say, oh, it was great to train with Johnny Rods and moving up in the world, and then other people that didn't have such nice things to say about him. How was your experience training under Johnny Rods? Well, personally, you know, I enjoyed it. Like I said, he gave me the opportunity to train at such a young age that I really don't see a lot of other trainers doing right now, probably for legal reasons, but still, (laughs) you know, he gave me the start, and I learned my fundamentals through Johnny, and there was a kind of a falling out nothing really personal between us but more of like of our uh, people that we worked with and um i haven't seen him in a few years but you know i wish him nothing but the best my training was there for the first few years was great and you know i i would always thank him because he gave me the start now it takes a lot to make a big change particularly going from one wrestling school to another when did you decide you know what now's the time to transition and go to the roh dojo uh, it had to be after attending a, a camp, a Ring of Honor camp, back in 2012. Uh, it was a tryout, and at the time, I was looking at it as just, this is a tryout. I need to get into Ring of Honor. But I'd learned so much within the two days of that weekend that I was like, wow, I just need to be around here more often. And I did another camp and learned a ton much more, a ton more. So I was like, all right, there's definitely, this works. So I just need to be in this system. And I put myself in the dojo. I asked if I could train every week. They said, sure. And I used to drive up to Queens, all to Philly, a few times a week, every week for a few years until eventually I just moved here. So I love being a part of the dojo. It started with the camp, and it's been going on since, you know? Who drew you into pro wrestling growing up? Ooh. It's hard to pick individuals, you know. I was a fan of the just wrestling in general, but, you know, then – if I had to pick individuals, I'd say the Hardys. You know, I was Jeff for uh, Halloween a few times. I was jumping off the couch, doing stuff like that, you know. I wanted to be like everyone, but those are the people that had that, that impact on me, you know. And now it's it's even cool to see them, to share a locker room with them. It's pretty surreal. I can, I can imagine. Have you gotten a chance to mix up with Jeff in the past, or are you, are you still waiting for an elusive dream match? Ah, uh, still waiting for that dream match. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Would you be willing to join the Broken Universe? Hey. Yeah, why not? Uh, I think, you know, if nothing needs a fixing, you just got to break it, right? That's true. Do you have a middle name? This is what we could call you Brother Something? Ah, you could call me Brother Michael, but I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we may not be allowed to, to do that for reasons. <laughs> yeah. Who is somebody that you maybe tried to emulate or pick things from when you started out wrestling? Was there anybody you looked at that, said, that you said, oh, man, I'd like to take something from there, take something from there and kind of make it my own? Mm-hmm. Well, I'd say uh, for as far as like a Ring of Honor guy that I would study a lot would be a Roderick Strong, just for the way he could switch gears and tune up, you know, and just everything's crisp and intense. And maybe not so much moveset, but as far as that ability to change gears, it would be something that I would want to emulate in him. I know I would study him all the time, and I had the few chances to wrestle him, which was great. You know, just tremendous athlete, Roderick Strong. The Supercard is coming up, WrestleMania weekend, Supercard weekend. First off, what match are you most looking forward to at WrestleMania? And what match are you most looking forward to, not including whatever you're going to be in, at the <laughs> Supercard? Hmm. Well, Mania, you know, I'd say uh, Owens and Jericho. Big fan of Owens. Love that guy. And um, 
for Supercard, he's easy, man. The Young Bucks and the Hardys, ladder match for the tag team titles. Like, I was set on that happening just when it was the Young Bucks versus the Hardys. And then when a surprise happened in New York, surprise in Vegas, and now it's a ladder match for the titles. Like, I, I don't think you could get any more exciting than that. Now, I got a feeling that you and Cheeseburger are going to be in the mix on that super card. Can you give us a little hint on what you guys are going to be doing? Well, I don't know exactly what we're doing yet, but I do know that we have an open challenge tag team. You know, we said we wanted a, a tag team match. Supercard proved that we're an upcoming team, proved that we're worthy for a tag team title shot. So let's see if they give us what we want. And how ironic. You guys want a tag team match? Teddy Long's getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. He's a godfather <laughs> of tag team matches. There might be something to that. You know, maybe I should ask him for one, too. But but he might book you against The Undertaker and Randy Orton and, and some other uh. guys. You never know. He <laughs> might make it a six-man tag team match. Hey, no risk, no reward, right? <laughs> True that. Now, according to your Twitter bio, you are a gamer. Oh, hell yeah. So am I. What are you nice. currently playing? Well, I'm an Xbox guy, you know, Xbox One. I've been uh, replaying those Marvel Ultimate Alliance games. They, like, redid them for the new system, which I'm, I'm a big fan of those. Like, I'm always late. When it comes to the party, it's hard for me to stay on top of the new games just to being on the road a lot. So I'll get them when they go on sale or I'll get the games for gold and gimmicks like that. And I wound up playing them like there. But I've been a big gamer my whole life, too. What's your favorite game? Ooh, Half-Life 2, I would say. It has to be my favorite. It was so immersive. My first playthrough of that, I was just so amazed. Well, I hope you enjoyed part one of our interview with Will Ferrara. We'll be back to wrap that up later in the show. But, of course, it is WrestleMania week. WrestleMania is just a few days away. Let's take a look here at some of the big matchups coming up. Undertaker versus Roman Reigns. Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar. Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton. Just to name a few. And here we have our resident podcaster, the people's podcaster, my TSC News colleague and everybody's favorite luchador in Delaware, Scott Anderson, with the latest random facts. This time, it's WrestleMania edition. All right, Scott, the people's podcaster, our resident luchador, what facts have you got for us for WrestleMania week? All right, Fred, here's what we have. Believe it or not, the Usos never been on the main card at WrestleMania. DDP, in case most of you didn't know, drove the pink Cadillac for the Honky Tonk Man and Greg Valentine at WrestleMania 6 back in 1990. Here's some interesting other facts for you. The Dudley Boys, possibly the greatest tag team of all time, 0-5 at WrestleMania, never won a WrestleMania match. R-Truth and Goldust as well, never won a WrestleMania match. HBK, Mr. WrestleMania, his overall record, 6 wins, 11 losses. Wow. Here's one for you. This will be the fifth time WrestleMania has been held on April 2nd. The other ones were WrestleMania 5, 11, 2000, and WrestleMania 22. Believe it or not, WrestleMania 22 also featured Randy Orton and Mickey James going for WWE world titles. Wow. And uh, now I understand you saved the best fact for last, and it's about our buddy Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler has never been involved in a singles match at WrestleMania. And I'll even give one more for you, Fred. The Undertaker, the greatest performer at WrestleMania, has only been involved in three title matches at WrestleMania, never defending a title at WrestleMania. Wow. That, Scott, those are some great facts. Before we let you go, because it is WrestleMania week, what WrestleMania match are you most looking forward to? I'm going to have to say Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens. And why is that? I think that's going to be the match that steals the show. The feud's been great. The buildup's been decent. Chris Jericho, you know, at his age at this point, can still bring it. And I'm just looking forward to that match. I think it's going to be a good one. Well, Scott, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate the facts. Of course, everybody can hear Scott with me on TSC News daily and weekly, youtube.com slash the sports courier. Scott, thanks so much, man. You, you might want to take that uh, mask to the cleaners. It's been around, that's for sure. There's only one Scott Anderson, that's for sure. But before we get back to pro wrestling, let's see what's going on in the world of mixed martial arts. June 24th, Saturday night, 
Bellator MMA is making its Madison Square Garden debut right here in the Empire State of New York. New York City, a tough task for the promotion owned by Viacom, which currently airs right now domestically on Spike TV. They've done some big ratings before with big fights with Kimbo Slice, Tito Ortiz, and Rampage Jackson. But can they create enough buzz to not only sell out Madison Square Garden, but to also sell this and be successful on pay-per-view. That remains to be seen. If you're wondering what the main event is, it is Chael Sonnen versus Vanderlei Silva, two former Ultimate Fighter coaches, two longtime rivals, two guys with the opportunity to make a whole lot of money, but it's contingent on Vanderlei Silva. Many times over the years, he has allegedly backed out of this fight. There was a time where this fight was scheduled or about to be scheduled, and he decided, you know what? I'm not going to take a drug test right now. And, well, he ended up being suspended for life. Later, it was shortened, and now he is ready to fight. He's in the clear for the most part. But personally, as a longtime mixed martial arts fan, as much as I'd like to see his pay-per-view succeed, at the end of the day, I am not going to believe Chael versus Vanderlei is going to take place until both men, especially Vanderlei Silva, is in the cage. At the time of this recording, ProWrestlingSheet.com reported that WWE is in talks with Sinclair Broadcast Group to purchase Ring of Honor Wrestling. Now nothing has materialized as of press time, but you better believe that that could certainly change the landscape of professional wrestling. More on this story next week as it develops. One last note when it comes to mixed martial arts. I do not want to hear any more about this Conor McGregor versus Floyd Mayweather matchup until I see both of these dudes sign on the dotted line and I see an official poster from UFC and Mayweather promotions that says Mayweather versus McGregor. And that's all I got to say about that. But enough of MMA, enough of boxing. Let's get back to part two of our interview with ROH star Will Ferrara. Has mm -hmm. all the commuting and chaos of the New York City area prepared you for all the travel you've had to make as a wrestler? Ooh. You know, I would think that it would, but I can't compare any travel throughout New York City compared to, like, driving cross-country to a Vegas or driving from a Philly to a Texas. So it gave me, you know... A little to, to prepare with, know that, okay, expect delays. The MTA will do that to you, no warning. But there's nothing like the open road. That's a whole different challenge, you know, in itself. I got a question here about your partner, Cheeseburger, who is Jushin Thunder Liger's favorite wrestler. Mm -hmm. What is the craziest Cheeseburger story that you are allowed to tell on the air? <laughs> oh, craziest Cheeseburger story. It's hard. You know, he's a pretty straight-laced guy, you know. Yeah, he, uh, he likes his games. He likes his skittles. I I think uh, I, more like a fun fact I could tell you about cheeseburger. He um he l is obsessed with skittles. He eats them all the time, but he does not like the red or the the green uh, the rather purple flavors, the grape and the the berry. So he only eats the the orange, the lemon, and the lime. So there was one time like I think we went to see a movie together on the road. We were in the night early. And he had the Skittles. I offered him, like, hey, man, you want some? He refused to take them because it was too <laughs> dark for him to see in the pack and to pick out the ones that he, he didn't like. So if you have a Skittles, if you wanted to – anyone, any fans would want to give Cheeseburger something at a signing, a pack of Skittles minus the, the red and purple ones. That, that's a really good idea. That's, a, that's an interesting superstition. Do you have any superstitions, whether it be in the ring or out of the ring? Hmm. You know, not really, not really a superstition guy. You know, I believe in a positive mindset, try to keep that going forward. You know, mind over matter and a lot of challenges, but not really superstitions. Superstitious. Superstitious. There you go. We, we got it. Go. We got <laughs> it. <laughs> Who is your all-time favorite pro wrestler? Man, it's hard. It's really hard to pick one. Uh, Don't worry. If you offend it's... anybody in the locker room, we won't tell them. <laughs> of course. You know, it. It might sound cliche, but I'd say Shawn Michaels. You know, just to watch him from a wrestler's perspective, the the fire, the selling, the just the emotion that he could draw and, and draw out of people is just amazing. You know, like you could learn something from him every day. You know, just keep watching him. One hundred percent. And I'll say this: as somebody that goes back and occasionally reviews old pay per views uh, on the network and everything, 
his matches age so well. I feel like 100 years from now, if you're stuck in a cave and you're digging up these, you know, all these artifacts and you find like an iPad or something with WWE Network on and you see a Shawn Michaels match, it's still going to be good. Yeah, you know, I think he has that he has that ability to transcend even to people that aren't really wrestling fans. They always get the story of what's going on when they're watching Sean, which is a hard barrier to break. No matter who's watching, they get it because he's so good. I have some questions here, not just from a fan of TSC News, but from a mutual friend of ours and a fellow <laughs> Ring of Honor wrestling star. Racket one half of fan. Coast to Coast, Leon St. Giovanni. LSG, our buddy Gio. He uh-huh. wants to know, tell us about the Mets games that we went to. Ah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's him being funny. Um, well, we went to a Met game at City Field uh, a few years back, maybe the two years back, and you know, just we had a bunch of beers at the game. I don't really remember so much about the game itself, but I think that's what he's referring to, trying to be funny. <laughs> okay, okay. Where did the nickname Little Will come from? Which was from Leon, not from me. You, you are mm. significantly more inter- in- intimidating oh, than I am. I mean, I would not mess with you. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just really. Oh, uh, dude, fact. no, it's, it's fine. Like I get that from all these guys. It started from Rhett Titus, who's a good friend of mine. Although he breaks my balls like it's his job, and uh, he just, he gives all these guys nicknames. You know, he, he, he would claim that he gave Cheeseburger his nickname, Cheeseburger, which wound up being his ring name. And all the guys, the new students, he'll give them nicknames. So. I'm not the tallest guy around. He's like, ah, he's small. We'll, we'll call him Little Willie. And <laughs> there, there's been. You know, I'll take it. I've heard a lot of uh, meaner nicknames come from his mouth. So Little Willie ain't that too bad. Ain't too bad. Man, so LSG trying to bite Rhett Titus' style, trying to swagger jack him and take credit for a nickname. Do. Man. Man, that Geo. That Geo. You, know, you know what? I'll ask you a question here. What is the most embarrassing story about Geo that you've been a part of? Oh, that, you, that, we're, that we're allowed to tell on air. All right. Well, I think we're allowed to tell this one. Uh, one of his first uh, trips coming with us on the Ring of Honor, he came to like a Nashville taping. I think it was the top prospect, probably 2015, maybe the one I was in. And uh, he was nervous like to, to hang out with the guys before the show, or rather the days before the show, and uh, drank a little bit. And he got a little, you know, too, too far. And he had this thing of butter. The, I can't believe it's not butter. And without anybody challenging him or anything, he took the lid off and he started taking a sip and, like, sipping just straight. I can't believe it's not butter. It's like, oh, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, oh, no. And I hope we can tell that one. But, <laughs> yeah, that's 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 what he gets for bringing up those ball games, you know. <laughs> wow, okay. Man, oh. I, I'm definitely going to bring that up if he doesn't already see it across uh... – the Manhattan area and all on YouTube. <laughs> oh, he should. <laughs> Who is the funniest person in the ROH locker room? Ooh. Funniest, you know, I think uh, is a tie. I think Mark Briscoe is probably wittiest as far as it comes, but Silas is bringing me so much, so many laughs that I, I got to say this guy's funny. You know, <laughs> Silas, Silas Young and Mark, it's a tie. It really is. It's hard to pick between the two, but I've laughed. I've cried of laughter both times. Or from both of them, numerous occasions. So it's so funny. From what I understand, the Briscoes are, you know, what what you get. You know, what you see on TV is kind of what you get in in real life, right? They're little little out there, but but Silas Young, that that <laughs> man that man's man kind of guy. Is he like that backstage? Uh, he he has that mean mug on twenty four seven. You know, like before I got the chance to be friends with him and get close to where I know him. I would just think that, man, he's really in a real bad mood today for some reason. He just got that, that <laughs> mug, you know. But yeah, he's a great guy once you get to know him. And, but he never really takes that uh, demeanor off. Or that mustache. Or that mustache. No, I, I, it's, it's intimidating, you know. It, it is but impressive, though. Oh, very impressive. It's a, it's a top-tier stash. I would say so myself. <laughs> Most underrated wrestler in ROH besides yourself and Cheeseburger. Who? Underrated, or I guess somebody that may not underrated, but somebody that you guys know is good, but the whole world uh, has yet to really acknowledge their true talent. Ah, uh, well, I would, you know, Shaheem Ali and, and LSG, you know, I would give them that. You know, they've been working just as hard as me and Cheeseburger have been working at the dojo and stuff, and they've been putting in the time. And it's hard for guys like us who don't really have a name yet and are building that name to jump that next level 
But, you know, it, it takes time. And I just like I tell them what I tell myself, you know, best foot forward, keep working hard, good things will happen. So coast to coast, I think they're starting to gel as a tag team. They just killed it against the Young Bucks on Ring of Honor TV a few weeks ago. So I hope that they just continue their momentum, keep doing what they're doing. And I see them being a nice featured team within the next year or so in Ring of Honor. You've been in Ring of Honor for a few years now. You just took a nice leap a few months back being an assistant trainer at the dojo. So behind the scenes, you've taken a leap forward. What do you have to do to take that leap forward on screen and become a more prominent character? Um, it's hard to say. You know, I guess it could be different depending on the case. You know, Each wrestler brings a whole different story, backstory, and, and tools to the table. But I'd say it's about getting over, getting over to the people and to yourself so you know who you are in any situation. You know, I, I know me personally I struggle with that character stuff at times, but um, I think once you are established with who you are and if you have a reputation, you know, if you're if you're not in Ring of Honor and you're on the indies, go to the top companies, you know, build a name for yourself, go international. If, and I think, you know, it's kind of uh, the stock that you build in yourself other places, Ring of Honor notices that. We don't try to hide that. We take advantage of that. We like to... I have a talent from all around the, the world, you know, so I'd say for people trying to raise their stock in Ring of Honor, just raise your stock as a wrestler in general, and that will help you. Could have said it better myself. Will, before we let you go, where can fans find you online, and where can they find you at a wrestling ring? Ah, well, you can find me at Will Ferrara on Twitter. I think it's at Ferrara W on Instagram. You know, those are my main two. I use the Facebook fan page here and there, but Twitter is my main uh, social media and uh, next time you see me in the ring, Supercard of Honor, Lakeland, Florida, uh, Florida, April 1st. You know, I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully me and Cheeseburger got some tag team action. And you'll see us in uh, Baltimore the week after that, Ring of Honor. Well, that's all the time we have for today, folks. I want to thank Will Ferrara for his time. Fun guest. Uh, enjoyed talking to him very much. I want to thank Scott Anderson. I want to thank everybody for tuning in right here on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. If you want more. TSC News, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the sports courier. You can catch the podcast on soundcloud.com slash TSC News. On both those sites, we have all our podcast links if you want to link on Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play. You name it, we got it. Until next time, everybody, I'll catch you next week. And as always, enjoy the matches. TSC News would like to extend its deepest condolences to the family of Jim Ross. Good old JR, the WB Hall of Famer, multiple time TSC guest, our friend, unfortunately lost his wife in a tragic accident. She was riding her motorized scooter and was hit by a car and later passed away due to catastrophic brain injuries. We here at TSC News send love and support to him and his family during this tragic time.